I'm Russ. And I'm Danny. And this is the Memory Makers Podcast. The show focused on helping you create amazing customer experiences and make more memories. Welcome to the Memory Maker Podcast. That's our new jingle. Are you ready for it? I, it's so good. I, did you write <laughs> that just now? No. <laughs> Lean in and say yes. Own it. Be like, yes. yeah, totally. Just off the top of my head, it's that good. <laughs> What's going on, good sir? We I haven't uh, seen you in a minute because uh, we've both been traveling like none other. How how where you've been up to Toronto? I was in Miami. How was Toronto for you? Toronto was good. I really enjoyed it. I have not been. I had not been to Canada in a really long time, and I had not ever been to Toronto. It was a very short trip for me. Um, but when I was there, I went to a Toronto Blue Jays game with with uh, some people at the event that I was speaking at. And what struck me as really interesting is, I don't know how recently it happened, but fairly recently, the Blue Jays did a stadium renovation and some mm. updates to their uh, their stadium. And it's um, it's the kind that has a retractable roof as well. And it was actually closed because of some of the um, the atmosphere things that were happening. That's right. um, with the, the wildfires that were up there. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, we got in there and one of the things that I noticed in their stadium was that they had a lot of video boards, right? Yeah, yeah. And ribbon boards surrounding the whole stadium and what sounded like a brand new sound system that was really like pumping the energy and, nice. and um, the volume. And what was interesting, you know, you go to something like a, a hockey game or an NBA game and they have a lot of that um, – hype style music and videos mm -hmm. and things that are happening before the game or during the game and they were doing that in a baseball game which i haven't really seen much before now admittedly i don't go to a ton of baseball games but i feel like this is something that feels kind of new um and it's not a traditional baseball experience but i gotta tell you from someone who is not a huge baseball fan i like going because of the social atmosphere and just the fun of being around with other people um i really enjoyed that and I think it might have been in like the top of the eighth inning when they brought in their relief pitcher, some guy named Romano, and they okay. had this like giant show and video board and flashing lights and did this whole walk up music thing. And I was like, this. So it's like a WWE cool. entrance for the relief pitcher or like a wild thing from, um, oh, Major League. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Getting See, after it. You know, you know what's great is that whenever we get together, we'll always bring up <laughs> references that we never expect to do. So yeah, Wild Thing that um, from uh, Major League. What a movie, right? I don't know. Uh, yeah, it, I don't it, know. I, mean, I haven't watched it. Movie. Gone back and watched it recently, so it's kind of you know on one of those like upper shelves where I you know I don't want to I don't want to you know break that reality of oh I loved this as a you know eight year old whenever it was out, but. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. You're welcome. <laughs> there you, go. And I, well, you know, I think that the experience that I had with the technology is really helpful and a good segue for today's topic, which yeah. I'm going to let you hit on. Well, and, and I think that's what, such a good, you know, info to share, like you said, because one of the things that we've been always passionate about is, is how do you keep things being story driven, social and immersive? And one of the best levers to help increase that in a number, all three of those categories is the growing use of technology. And this is always a, a slow arms race and maybe not even slow at times, but it, it seems like it's always this continual reinvention and how are we upping the game and how are we, you know, competing with technology in the home? How are we competing with technology out of the home? And then how are we leveraging that to actually create something that, you know, is a powerful guest experience, right? And so from our per our perspective as creative works, it's like, okay, this is, this is something that we can always find some good applications for, but using technology technology for technology's sake is sometimes a really easy thing that we can, you know, d slip into at times and, and get kind of caught up in the fairy dust of, ooh, and ah, that, that on the surface level, you know, it can be great. But I think where we've found from our personal experience and as we've grown and evolved immersive attractions that technology that does the right 
intended outcome of making something more immersive, making something more social, or helping make something more story driven is really where you get the true impact for the guest and a really solid return on your investment because it of the positive side effects of healthy revenue that that helps bring. So why don't we jump into, I'm going to kick it over to you and let's, let's talk a little bit about the immersive factors that we need to think of when it comes to different types of tech. Sure. You know, we, we talk about immersive and it's, how do we transport the guests to a different world? How do we Mm. take an experience and make it more engaging during that experience? And so a few examples of how this might show up. Let's talk about something like laser tag, right? Mm -hmm. Creating this environment and this world that's cohesive and epic when someone walks in and it kind of blows them away. You know, you can do things like taking, creating very large props with integrated light, sound and fog effects that are triggered through things that happen within the game to take that experience to the next level. So it's not just being surrounded by static props and things to look at, but helping them come to life in meaningful ways that are part of the game. Well, and you look at like an example like Thrills, right, where we we went in there, you know, they went really heavy on their on the first um, arena that we had done for them. And it's it's done so well. But we just did a um, an expansion package, I guess, is what you could call it for them, where we brought in some new props. It had um, it had we had mechanized elements. We, you know, is some really, really great pieces that, that get into that. And and. That I think is going to be some areas of focus of of how do you get some of these secret trapdoor reveals? How do you get some of these um, you know kind of still physical environments that can be uh, revealed to the players as they're interacting with the space? Because that is great not only because they're having more fun while they're doing it, but it doesn't matter if you have two people in on a Tuesday. Now I can have as dense of an experience for those people as I would for a birthday party on Saturday. Yeah, that's a really good point. And as we kind of continue down looking at other ways that this can manifest, Mm -hmm. things like mini golf, right? We do something in our black light mini golf called electric edging, which is instead of having the perimeter uh, edging of each hole be brick or something static, there are these kind of um, molded plastic pieces with integrated lighting so they glow from within. And one of the things that you can do with that is have the color change maybe the color is going to be set to match the overall aesthetic of a course maybe it's going to match the branding of the facility maybe it's going to be a special um, event or special holiday that you want to be promoting with the colors that um, the led lights are glowing or you can integrate it into events that happen within the holes and have something trigger a whole light show that happens on the edging as well so it's really cool ways to bring that experience a little bit more to life And then you look at something like VR, which is an interesting one to think about when it comes to technology, because so much of VR is technology. Mm -hmm. A lot of the entire experience is, but there are ways that you can make that more immersive of improved graphics or haptic feedback through the guns or any kind of wearable that you might have high quality audio to really bring you into that world. I think you do um, extra sensory input. So, you know, you have certain things that will blow wind or certain things that will blow heat. There's sound, be, especially in something like VR, where you are so, you know, immersed in that world with the headset on and everything. But uh, you want to talk about the the kind of quantum leap that, that takes when you do start to engage, you know, the, the olfactory. Okay, there's my there's my calendar word of the day. But when you, you whether it's sight, sense of smell or, you know, anything that is ab- above and beyond what the status quo is when we look at layering in technology. So that way it can have the best opportunity to surprise and delight, you know, and that's where some of that immersive tech really finds its, its ways is this is that icing on the cake that we can now use to take it to another level where it hasn't been previously. Um, so, it, you know, it just really, it gives those ooh and awe moments and those, those laugh out loud moments that we, we get because it's, it's something that they can't necessarily see inherently or it's something way cooler and different than they've seen before and the examples we've talked about so far are attractions that we happen to create it at creative works but Mm -hmm. an example of one that we don't do go-karts right there are manufacturers that are taking projection mapping technology to project things onto the course that if you drive over it's a power up or it's something to slow you down or things like that and it basically is like real life mario kart Mm -hmm. you 
are able to live that game in real life and and make it more than driving a go-kart around a track and having interactive features to really make that more immersive. Yeah, if you thought it was good on the Wii when you first got to start tilting the remote to actually steer, now, okay, it's now you get to live it. So, <laughs> yeah, I fell in love with that and I have been obsessed with trying to find more places that I can go and do that because it, it's just, it allows you to do more than you could ever do elsewhere. And especially in location-based entertainment, we just, we have more of a platform to deliver on stuff like that, where they don't have to worry about tripping over their coffee table. You know, if they're, if they're getting a little too rowdy on VR boxing or something like that. So take us to the next step here and talk about story driven. So when you're thinking story driven entertainment, I mean, everybody, for the most part, can jump to, you know, the golden mouse of, of Disney and uh, and what they've done just with everything that they're doing being rooted in storytelling. Um, and how do you take a story and create or how do you create take an experience or an attraction and, and then create a story um, with it? And so for us, it's been uh, a natural progression with things like laser tag or mini golf when those are are themed and and are story based at their core but we go through exercises of okay well why are you all of a sudden on pandora or why are you all of the sudden in a safari you know adventure and and because we want to make care our guests the main character of their own stories we have to help set that stage a little bit and and give some context clues around it and so you know when we look at stuff like mini golf is probably one of the easiest ones to create some storytelling around it where you know we have a client right now that we're working with that ha- is wanting to pay homage to the local history of copper mining and the stagecoach robberies and all of these really this killer history that they have um, and how do we start to educate people about that and so by having different themed holes that then tell different stories and take you through different areas and it changes and evolves as you go as opposed to being in an outdoor mini golf where okay we just have have random giraffes and hippos and then big hills, people will, you know, both can be, exist, but what's what do you think has the better option of getting somebody to come back again? Um, you know, what's going to have more layer and depth for you to justify a higher price point? Um, and what's going to help them celebrate or escape more by doing that attraction? And so you look at something like mini golf and that, that perspective where you can do storytelling because you're inherently going from, you know, hole one to hole two to hole three. There's a linear flow to it and, and it works nicely. But you also have things where, okay, you, you look at stuff like escape rooms, right? Where the whole thing is, is you, you get a briefing and you are put as you are a group of private detectives looking for, you know, Dr. Wisconsin's lost artifact and whatever that whole thing is. Right. But you have to put them into that story so they understand what they're working towards and, and, you know, kind of, again, just getting, suspending that disbelief and getting them that, that opportunity because it's what's so powerful for any form of entertainment. And so the tech that's driving this, whether it's video, whether it's, um, you know, hidden trap doors, whether it's, um, you know, certain uh, kind of triggered relays that you can use with magnetics and, and all kinds of things where that actually lets you have a very tactile experience and, and look, touch and feel with, with what some of that is. And so with then you look at stuff like laser tag where, okay, well, we can take a briefing video, right? Where that used to be a little bit more of the cover your butt legalese of, okay, we tell them not to run. We tell them not to climb. We tell them not to swear. And it's also on the video. Great. Go have fun and, and responsibly play. But when you're competing with a 4k television and a multi-billion dollar game franchising industry, you need to have something that's meeting their expectations for that. And so even doing a cool staging room as part of your briefing investing, where it's playing a video of, okay, you're on a deep space mission and you're crash landing on a planet and you have reason to believe now that there's hostile life forms and, and being able to then have a huge sound system that is rumbling that room so that way you feel the shuddering of what that crash landing is, right? And then you have video screens that show this planet from afar but then that thing's getting real close and then you're hearing cracking glass Uh, again getting that heart pumping getting that excitement level up getting people uh really really into the main character of, of the story that you're trying to tell 
again, let's give them a cinematic experience and let's show them things that they haven't been able to see in that experience before. And and those are just the, the elements that I think personally, storytelling is my absolutely favorite use of the technology uh, because it just sets you apart and it doesn't make people feel like they're getting on the Greyhound bus to go from one attraction to the next, right? It, everything has a dense and unique approach to it. And so let's let's bring this around and hit on that third point of mm. social, right? Location-based entertainment centers are about bringing people together and they're celebrating together, they're escaping together, they're doing something with friends or family or people mm -hmm. that they care about. And so how through the attractions and the use of technology can we facilitate more social interaction? And so when I was thinking about this. The first thing that came to my mind was our Lucky Putt golf, right? Uh, Lucky Putt takes basically the idea of traditional golf and kind of turns it on his head where instead of thinking about, well, I need to do two or three strokes to meet par on this course, it's all gamified where I'm on instead of three strokes, I got 1,200 points. And it's all digitally tracked through sensors in your putter and you're checking in at each hole and the score is following you around and it's automating that process but what that allows you to do is take okay i've got the pen and i got the paper they're gone now you don't have to worry about trying to track your score and well what'd you get what i get and trying to write that down because that can be a distraction right and by having that automated scoring that follows everybody from hole to hole individually and as the team you don't have to think about that anymore you could just focus on the experience itself the competition and having fun with your friends or family yeah well you know, in those animations that we do on lucky putt whether you see stuff like that from top golf or even the bowling like bowling's been doing a killer job adding new um socialized aspects to their game to make it more recreational yeah you think about all the projection mapping um integrated technology that uh, I, br both brunswick and cubica amf have examples of mm -hmm. something like this and it allows them to take that top golf experience where someone who's not a strong golfer can still score a lot of points and win in top golf same thing for bowling you could have someone who's really experienced and someone who's really not that good at bowling and because of the nature of the games it, it helps create a, a, a more inviting social atmosphere where everyone can compete kind of on the same level and, and I think that the social aspect on the technology side, especially with really well-established or, or long-standing attractions like golf and bowling, it breathes new life into what that experience actually is. Because mini golf's been around for 110 years, 120 years now at this point. And for a vast majority of that, there wasn't a whole lot of new stuff that was getting integrated into it. And so now it's relevant for a digital digitized generation that looks and, and you know seeks out those types of experiences. And it makes them makes that relevant for them. So that way they are more inclined to go and, and engage with each other that way. And, and they're not feeling like a fish out of water or that they're doing something that's dated so you know if, if bowling and golf and and um and bowling golf and what was the third one? oh anyway but i was thinking top golf again but if if those types of attractions who would have been around forever can reinvent themselves but still stay familiar to their core i mean that is a win win all day long yeah. And, you know, the, the last thing that I'll hit on when it comes to the the social side of, of attractions is, is VR, right? Which is an interesting example to talk about social uh, socializing because there's a the nature of it is suspending reality and the people that are around you because you have a headset that gives you a brand new reality. But there are ways that technology has advanced over time to make that even more social of being able to see your friends avatars depending on the style of game that you're playing so you don't feel like you're alone in this or being able to use um, integrated communication systems where through the headsets you can talk to the other players regardless of what's happening around you or any of the effects that are going on like wind or heat or um, you know sound all those different things uh, plus there are ways that people are integrating um, leaderboards and stat tracking and um, kind of basically consumer facing apps that they're able to create their account unlock new skins over time just like what they experience at home with a lot of the video games that they see on Xbox or PlayStation or PC yeah. bringing some of that uh, those best practices of ways that, that bring people back again and again and be able to say, look at the skin I got. No, I got this over here and bringing that to a VR platform in a meaningful way. 
Big time. I, I think the biggest thing when we're doing attraction research or when uh, customers of ours are doing attraction research, we always just try to, to reinforce that, again, the bells and whistles are great, but if, if, if you have a, a manufacturer that's making something and using that intentionally and driving, you know, kind of desired outcomes from that versus someone who may just say, okay, everybody loves to have flashy lights on this start evaluating and, and, and scrutinizing that a little bit more because that's what's ultimately going to win out on the success of the attraction is, you know, what does this help me leverage it to be more social? Does it help me leverage it to have better storytelling? Does it help me, you know, have more immersion? And some, you may hit the, the jackpot and they'll hit all three. Some may only hit one and that's okay, but you need to to be understanding, hey, if I'm looking at an add-on for an attraction or if I'm looking at, at you know, one, one option versus another how is that technology actually serving me and is it worth that type of an investment and you know because we can translate that to you know satisfied customers so how is the technology serving me i think that's a really good wrap up both for how's it serving me and how's it serving the end customer i think that's mm -hmm. a great spot for us to wrap up another great episode russ well i would i would agree with you that it is great because you're great <laughs> oh thanks you're welcome uh as always, we have uh, episodes that are coming out weekly, so be sure to come back and hear more of uh, the insights that we're going to be bringing to you as we bring on guests and partners and clients and how we can really hone in on and uncover more of the secret sauce that goes into making these memories. If you like what you heard, don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review if you would. And those five stars are greatly appreciated. If you've got ideas for future episodes, topics, people that we should bring on, uh, follow us on social media platforms, send us a message, and you know we're always looking for ways to bring content that's meaningful to you. Absolutely, and big shout out as always to Mike on the ones and twos over there working the ultranet for us, and we will catch you guys on the next one, Troublemakers. <laughs>